Hello and welcome back to Fishing with a JC. On today's episode, we're going to look into a common problem with the Garmin Live Scope. It's the dreaded lack of power issue. How many times you've been on the lake and then suddenly your your Live Scope screen just flashes and it says there's no connection to the transducer? Well, we're going to show you a couple of reasons why this happens, and we're also going to show you how we can fix it. So let's get right to it. So you dished out around $1,500 on a Garmin Panoptix Live Scope, and then suddenly your, your sonar flashes and it says it's losing connection to the transducer. So what can be causing this? One simple thing, lack of power. The Live Scope, it, it needs a lot of power. It really pulls a lot of current and it really would drain your battery. You have to have a deep cycle, and it's best if you have an AGM. Now one of the things that I discovered while using this system is that if you take the faceplate off of this mounting stand and it rains, these little connections here will get wet and then if you pop the faceplate back on and that's still wet, it'll cause a short, it'll fry the circuitry in this mounting stand. So you want to make sure this is nice and dry before you snap on your faceplate. Another thing that I like to do is I went and bought some of those waterproof bags. I just take those and I wrap them around this and then I snap it at the bottom to keep them dry if I have to keep my boat out overnight. So let's talk a little about my old setup and the issues I had with power. So let's start back here at the battery, the source of all the power. Before I had two Group 27 lead acid batteries. They were made by Harris and they were deep cycle batteries and these things were really good but they just didn't have enough power and here's why the setup that I had before was one battery for my trolling motor this is a 12 volt Minn Kota and then I had another battery that I used for the starter but I also had all of my other components hooked up to this battery so I had two Garmin's, an older model, Echomap 93SV, and then I had a newer Echomap Plus 93SV, two of those, one up front and one up back, and then I also had the Garmin LiveScope sonar box, and then the Garmin GCV20, this is a high definition box that gives you high def down imaging and side imaging. I had all of these units hooked up to this one battery and then just the trolling motor hooked up to this one so what ended up happening is this trolling motor battery was fine I'd only pull about maybe 70 percent of of this or I'd have 70 percent left I don't have about I'd only use about 30 percent on this other battery it would drop down to about nine volts you really have to have a good 11 volts minimum for this Garmin live scope to work so this setup just is not working. It's pulling way too much current and it's causing this to run down. I didn't want to put any of these other units onto this battery because I wanted my trolling motor to have plenty of power because it pulls so much current as well. And you want to have that, that power when you go to, to run your trolling motor. If I, I was afraid if I put, put some of these other units on it, it would drop it down. Now, I could have probably split them up and that probably would have been a little bit better. But... I came up with a different solution. So here's a solution I came up with. I added a third battery and I switched all these out to be Group 27 AGM deep cycle batteries. The first battery up here is strictly for the starter and one Garmin unit and the live scope and the Garmin GCV20. So, so these three units here and the starter go to this. I don't use my starter all that much, so it doesn't pull. I'm, I'm mainly trolling. I'll go to where I need to go, and then I troll a lot. So this seems to work out well, and this battery doesn't drop hardly at all. Then the other two batteries are set up to run my 24-volt Minn Kota Tarova. This is an 80-pound thrust, and a big difference from my old one. It was 55 thrust, and this... 80 pound just pushes me. I can go up to about three miles per hour on it. Now in the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you how to hook up everything and then also how to get 24 volts out of two batteries. Also switched out my old 
two bank charger for a three bank charger. It's a Minn Kota 3150, and it gives me five amps to each. So let's talk a little bit about the wiring for your components. When you break out these garments, you're going to see that you're going to have either two or four wires. The two wires that you're going to be most concerned about is going to be the positive and the negative. The, the positive is going to be your red wire and the negative is going to be, or ground, is going to be your black wire. These other two wires, there's a brown one and a blue one, and those are set for it, for some type of networking between other Garmin devices. You won't need those, so just go ahead and tape those off if you have them. If you don't, then you'll just have to use these these two wires here, your red, and your, your positive and your negative. So now what I did was, and, and you'll, you saw it in my, in my graph, is I had a distribution block that hooked everything up to, instead of trying to hook everything up to your battery, just take a, a lead out of your battery and hook it up to a distribution block. That way it cleans it up and you have one point where everything connects into it. It's just a lot more efficient. So let's talk a bit about how this was wired up. Right here I have on this side a 12 volt battery input. You got your red and your black to for your positive and negative coming in. So let's let's just follow this red line here for our positive. This is going to come in and then up here I've got jumper wires that comes out and into the next unit over here. And then I twisted a wire together with it and I jumpered over. So now I have this green block positive and negative and then I've jumpered off of them into this blue block and then I've pigtailed off of that and come over to this. So I have actually three separate divisions here. This is your input and then you have two outputs here. Uh, this one just goes to a USB device that I use to power my phones and then this other goes to the rear sonar unit. Now you'll notice here that I do not jumper from this side over here. What we do is we have another battery that comes in and gives your power and your ground and you pigtail off here so you'll have two more banks that are, are available for other units. So here I've got the front sonar going to this one and then this is just free. So let's talk a little bit about how to hook up the, the batteries to get 24 volts for your trolling motor. I went to Cabela's and I bought this Connect E system and it's really really nice it basically all you have to do is hook up your positive and negative connections to the positive and negative posts of your battery on on both of your batteries and then you have these clips that you snap in and then coming out of that it it parallels over to pull your negatives in and crosses them over so that once you come out with the 8 gauge you've got 24 volts up here but then on these, the 10 gauges, you've just got 12 volts. So basically it's just taking your positive and negative coming straight off of this battery to give you 12 on each side. And then these are crossed over so that they give you 24 volts and that's what you send to your trolling motor. So you get your positive lead going to your trolling motor and your negative lead going to your trolling motor. It's really nice. So this is my starting battery. And you can see here I've got the negative and positive hooked up. Here's the positive, here's the negative for the starting for the starter that goes to the engine or the motor. And then I also have wires that come in for my charger from the three bank charger, and then another one that goes directly to the front unit. So that's all the connections that are on this one. Now these two are in parallel, and you can see I've used those clips. So let's just take this one down here. I've got my positive going here and I've got my negative going here. So this one runs these two, this battery, and then this one goes over here for your, your positive and then it runs over here for your negative. So this one's for that battery. And then you can see here there's eight gauge wires coming off and I run those all the way over here to my distribution panel. So this battery is going to this side and then over here on this one, I have this one coming straight down here and up to here on the other side of it, just like I showed you in the last one. So coming off of this, if you look, this wire comes down and around and then it goes directly into the circuit breaker and then the ground goes to the ground wire of the trolling motor. And here's a close up picture of the 60 amp circuit protector. And what this does is it, if there's any power that kicks back 
it'll just shut it off. So if you're charging your batteries and it tries to send a signal back to your trolling motor, it'll trip and it won't fry your, your trolling motor basically. So that's the down and dirty on how to fix power issues with the Garmin LiveScope and also how to avoid them by covering up your your stands if it, so that they don't get wet. We also covered how to wire your components and a 24 volt trolling motor. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel. Hope you like this. If you do, give it a good thumbs up, share it, and then we will see you on the next one.